One of the biggest challenges to uh, be prepared to deal with the fiscal picture in New Jersey. I don't know any economist who will give us any kind of a guarantee that we will not have a downturn within the next three years. When the downturn comes, it's not going to be pretty. Um, I think Governor Murphy is prepared to deal with the problem, but it's not going to be a nice problem. He's talking about $60 billion shortfall in the, in the pension fund, a $40 billion shortfall in the um, health care fund for state employees. Those are numbers that are almost difficult to try to even comprehend. And so when the downturn, when the downturn comes, and it will come, um, revenues will be off, expenditures will be up, and you have those problems hanging over from previous years. So that's going to be his biggest problem, dealing with numbers that are almost beyond comprehension. Putting a budget in place, timely budget in place, uh, I think is quite an achievement given the circumstances that he entered office in and, and the revenue picture. I, I think that was quite an achievement of uh, being able to craft a budget, albeit it was very difficult, as we know, with the Democratic majority, and, uh, and getting that in place and, you know, people not necessarily feeling a lot of pain as a result of it. So I think that's an achievement. Uh, on the other hand, I think there, you know, the jury's still out on a lot of different issues. It's very difficult the first year to really hit the ground running. You have a new, new administration, a new staff. Uh, everyone's new and everyone's really developing policy in each of their fields. So it's, it's hard, you know, by November of the first year to say um, the governor was successful in doing this, 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 and this legislatively. Because it, it just doesn't work that way. It takes quite a while to, to really work out your vision and your legislative agenda and getting it through the legislature. But I, I think it's done well. It's had a lot of uh, uh, peaks and valleys, a lot of bumps there, a lot of uh, run-ins with his own Democratic majority, which is we'll unusual, get very unusual. Yeah, we'll you know, get so so that, that's, been the, uh, that's been the problem so far. Steve, he's focused a lot on the environment. Um, it, the, the environment was kind of fashionable that people would deal with, and then it kind of got off the burner and people didn't stay focused on it, but he moved it back front and center um, with the wind energy, and we have a real aggressive wind program, and um, the governor is, takes great pride in saying that it's probably the most ambitious offshore wind program anywhere in the nation. Um, I, I think his, he's done the environmental argument by making it an economic argument, how it can, we can save money by with the renewable sources of energy. I think that's a very plus um, point that he is trying to drive home and returning us to focus on those issues that we can't just keep going with the fossil fuels and going back into the greenhouse gas initiative um, I think that that is a, a positive giving credits and making people pay for those credits on on, um, on renewable sources is a very positive item I think as cabinet having a um, diversity of a cabinet is also reflective of the state which is pretty um, positive and also finally I think another positive was his um, pay equity something that um, the father of three daughters and Donnie has the three daughters too it's something we've been very focused on and trying to see that um, women and men are paid the same amounts of monies for the same work and it's, it's kind of amazing in the 21st century that we had to even have that discussion but it was something he ran on and it's something that he's done so for a first year I have to say he's done some some really pretty good things. I agree with the problems that he's facing. They're, they're monumentous and um, probably one of the, the biggest problems is getting people to get along to stay focused enough to deal with the issues and not the politics. But that's a problem that we all have all the time. To be snarky, but uh, it's the fact that he's not Chris Christie and he's not President Trump. And those two things put him up in the approval rating, ratings and give him a, a, a quote-unquote mandate, if you will, because New Jerseyans think so unfavorably of, of both of those leaders on, on the whole. Um, in, in all seriousness, I think his achievements, I, I wouldn't disagree with Governor Bennett in with regard to um, his focus on the environment. I think that some of the things like pay equity, um, 
the gun control bills, refunding Planned Parenthood for preventative health care. This was the low-hanging fruit that we expected any Democratic governor to come in and do. I don't know that you can count it as a significant achievement. It was sitting there waiting in the wings for eight years um, while, or seven and a half years while Governor Christie was running for president, and he wouldn't sign those kind of common sense bipartisan measures. <coughs> Um, I think that the, another big emphasis that, that I think the governor hasn't given due credit for is the refocus on pay-as-you-go for the, the transportation trust fund. I think that that is fundamental um, in how we both improve the quality of transportation and also not continue to get our citizens in greater debt. I think the, the relationship with the legislature, specifically the legislative uh, leadership, uh, is going to be critical to whatever success he's going to have in the future. And so the constant of knocking the heads is not going to be, uh, does not bode well uh, for the future. But in terms of his greatest accomplishment, you know, in the 11 months that we've uh, had a Murphy administration, I think it's the fact that he's still standing. I think it's, it is stunning to me. And I think uh, Trump and Christie, uh, certainly helped him get elected, um, but this 54% approval rating that our governor has right now, given that he has ushered in the most progressive agenda that we've seen in a generation or two, um, is really contrary to what a lot of us in this room probably thought was the conventional wisdom. You're not supposed, it's not just the guns is, uh, issue, as Governor Florio uh, talked about, this is someone who went out and says, I'm going to raise more than a billion dollars in taxes and still gets elected. All right, people really didn't like Chris Christie, and anybody who wasn't Chris Christie could have gotten elected uh, that time. But he then goes out and raises more than a billion dollars in taxes. Now, as people on this panel certainly know, you come in as a Democrat after eight years of Republican rule, you have an agenda that's been pent up. There's a lot of progressive energy out there. You raise taxes to help pay for the things that you have to do. And there's a couple different reactions the public can have. And in 1990, it was one. And in 2018, it's a completely different one. We are in a very different time and place. And so I think one of the most interesting uh, parts about this administration, and I think a real accomplishment, is that he has done paid family leave and paid uh, sick leave and funding for Planned Parenthood and gun, uh, additional gun controls and making a down payment towards the free community college and if they can get their act together, legalizing marijuana and raising the minimum wage. These things, to put all of that together and raise more than a billion dollars in taxes and still be at 54% approval, uh, I think that is probably one of the biggest accomplishments I give them.